black lock. <laughs> okay, um, welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to discuss um, the history of the student struggle in Quebec. Uh, for um, for my presentation, I have put it there a little bit. I will more focus on the last struggle that I have been uh, in Quebec in 2012, the ge uh, general strike uh, that happened there for six months. It led to uh, a moment of social unrest at this time that was not seen in the, in the country of Canada for more than uh, 40 years. Um, so, uh, firstly, I will explain uh, how st student unionism works in Quebec. Uh, it's kind of different from the rest of North America and for what I have seen in some part of Europe, like France. And uh, at the end, I will uh, be more specific on uh, the strikes and how we made it possible and what happened during this time. So, uh, student unionism in Quebec, how it's worked. Uh, uh, first, uh, I have to explain uh, how the education systems work back then. Uh, there is two kinds of uh, institution in post-secondary uh, post um, education. There is a college, which is called CJET. It is a unique structure uh, in Quebec around the world, uh, where there is a technical program that leads to uh, a job. Uh, so you don't go to university, you just do this to, to find a, you a job after that. And in those uh, college, you have the pre-university pre program. Uh, it's at the end of the high school, you go to CJEP, and after two years, you go to university for three uh, years. Uh, so all those students are together in the same college, and that uh, can affect uh, us here, because uh, there is more students who can be involved in uh, student strike. Um, Secondly, uh, the cost is uh, in Quebec are kind of low. For the college, it's mostly free. You just have to pay some uh, some fees to uh, the work uh, to the institution, but it's uh, really state-funded. And on the other hand, uh, in the university, the the fees are uh, quite low, uh, especially if you compare with the rest of North America. Um, Canada or um, the US. And they are state funded, so even if you don't go to a public university, you will pay the same price as in a private university because they are all state funded. The student union in, in Quebec uh, more or less um, is um, like the um, union in uh, the uh, union of workers. That means that when you are a member, uh, when you go to, to a school, is, if it's a college or a university, you are automatically a member of the union. There is one union per faculties or by uh, college. And they are recognized by the administration of the institution. And this automatic membership and uh, recognition uh, can uh, make us uh, have some money because we we have money for each student we have. It's built legitimacy office like the Hatsa office. We we got those. We have billboard from the institution. We can so we can make propaganda. And so uh, the student union uh, at this local uh, form is. Uh, it worked like that. And on the national scale or provincial scale, there are a federation of uh, those student unions. There are two kinds of federation. There is the lobbying one, lobbyist one, which is uh, FEC and FERG, and the other one, which is more um, based on direct democracy, uh, down to top, and uh, which uh, promote uh, direct action, direct democracies, and so on. So, uh, for myself, I will more focus on uh, this union, which is called ASSE. And 
because they usually lead all the student movement because the others just lobby with the, the government. So uh, that's the form of our uh, union in Quebec. That leads us to the general strike. Uh, general strike in, in Quebec uh, are strike most most likely um, they will most likely take form in uh, uh, compared to a worker strike. That's mean when we are on strike, the student we shut down all the course, all the activities on the campus. There is no class, there is no exams, so there cannot be any uh, degrees to be uh, give to the student. At this time, we uh, do picket lines, we empty the, the, all the class. So at, at this point, uh, the strike is, uh, is enforced, is really effective. Um, for a strike to, to arrive, it's mostly based on the General Assembly, which takes the decision to go on strike, but they, all, they take the decision to go on uh, to all political uh, decisions are made through the General Assembly. Uh, there is an executive, but uh, or official, but they, they don't take any decision, they just apply what the General Assembly has voted. Uh, the General Assembly is open to every student who is a member of the Union. Everybody can talk, there is no, um, there is no uh, privilege for the executive, they don't sit in front of us, they don't have any salaries or stuff like that that can be uh, increased the top bottom hierarchical way of doing. So this, uh, the General Assembly being the, uh, the core of our union, it's help us build our legitimacy. Because legitimacy is what we can rely on because the, the strike are not um, recognized by the law as a, a worker strike. We are we just build up our own legitimacy, our own collective law. So in that in that objective, uh, we. Uh, we function on rule of order, so everybody can talk in the during the general assembly. You can propose whatever you want, and if the people agree with you by a vote of 50 plus one percent, the the decision is good. So that's help us build legitimacy uh, within the group of the students. They it's create a, commu a community because people tend to be involved in the decision because they uh, participate in those decisions. Um, and uh, when talking about legitimacy, it's quite, it's not really easy to build uh, an internal uh, legitimacy, but for the external legitimacy of a movement from within the general population, the media, the, the government, it's really uh, difficult because we cannot reach them with our messages. For all our propaganda, they are uh, usually in cyber school. So to, to do this, we have to uh, get mobilized and go out of the school. As, uh, so so to, to do so, um, we need, when we going to create a movement, we start with uh, a, a principle that is really important for us, it's called escalation of tactic, which means that you start at the ground level and you elevate each time the, the force of your action or your... Um, so it's a series of action progressively more radical. It helps it help us build legitimacy and create a community within or among the student. As, uh, when, when we want to start, we start usually with some petition, which doesn't involve uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of 
participation from the people who want to sign or the people who uh, are doing, uh, we are recalling the signature or a political flash mob, which is like 15 minutes, you, you go to one place and you just be visible. So that's how we, uh, we can reach to other students, but even to um, have activists within our group. Because uh, usually if, if they, when, when you begin in being an activist, it's difficult to find your place when people are professional activism. You, there is a, a seizure between you and them, and those kind of, of um, smooth uh, political action help us. And uh, another point which is really important from those uh, um, minor uh, political action are because they always fail. It's the government won't listen to a petition. It, it, we, we all know it, we all face it one time in our life, or even with the sit-in, or something like that. So when people see that those uh, tactics have failed, they are ready to do a more radical political action. And uh, even in case of sit-in, you are uh, pacific, you're just sitting there, and you get beaten by cops, you tend to hate the cops for beating you because you are pacifist, and you say, no, oh, so, if I'm pacifist and I get beat enough, so why don't I can throw rock at them or I cannot do anything else to uh, I will be beating up so it doesn't work. So by all this um, the, this series, we will uh, increase the, the the radical political action and when we are there, uh, usually we um, tend to organize a one-day strike. So at this point, we call, it, we call a general assembly, we said, okay, the petition, the small demos, uh, the flash mob, they don't work. People are not listening to us. So what are we going to do? We are going to do a, a strike, a one-day strike, uh, all around uh, campus, different campus, and uh, to do more or less, usually it's a demo, but sometimes it's an occupation or some other stuff. And those days of uh, one day strike are really important uh, because they are uh, still in a progressive way to obtain a general strike uh, mandatory. Like, if we want to, to, to do a general strike, we don't do it uh, quickly. We prepare. And so when we do those days of one day strikes, um, it's helped us because people who were never involved in a strike can see what it's looked like. So after that, when we have a general strike, people already experience it. So uh, even for the people who don't agree with the strike, they, uh, they fear it less or more, it depends. But in the end, it's helped us build experience, create a community, especially because those days are of strike are uh, the, the activists or the students who uh, participate in the, in the strike and are creating uh, boundaries between them. And they, so when the time will come, they, they will know each other and they will be uh, radicalized. So, um, if, does anybody have uh, any question on how uh, the student union uh, work in Quebec? Now, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you were talking about the progressive uh, scale of actions. Okay, that's perfect. I really noted that down. And, uh, but how do you work? I mean, you have the general assemblies. Okay, and then what? And then you merge into workshops? Or? Yeah, we do workshops too. Uh, in the part of excavation of uh, tactic, okay. we, we do a lot of uh, of um, brochure and so you, have, so you have like okay we're gonna have a propaganda workshop we're gonna have a strategy no we well, have yeah, already oh yeah we do a propaganda I workshop mean, but, I mean I'm talking about organization in, inside the union yeah inside the union yeah it's a good question uh, we do a little um, like boot camp 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's to military term, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, we say. use the roaming activist camp. Yeah, activist camp, like this. So people uh, attend, like, like today there is presentation, workshop, so people can know each other, mm -hmm. but they can learn, so we can uh, discuss. And um, those are really good time to create communities too. And after that, uh, another thing which is really important that we do is we go talk to the people. So we do mobilization on campus, we, are, we have those tracks, flyers, and we're going to go uh, see the, the student and say, okay, there is a tuition hike, uh, the fee is going to increase, so uh, let me uh, talk about it, and I can do my propaganda, like five or ten minutes, with each person, individual. Because you can put flyers, you can put... Uh, uh, yeah, image or not sure they yeah. Or they're not but if you talk to them, and usually people uh, have time, especially during the lunch or some things like that, and you can just uh, talk to them, and we do that uh, quite often when we have an uh, important issue that we want to to build, and it helps us to uh, improve our arguments because when you have to to talk with people, you develop skills mm -hmm. and so on. So it's really important to and uh, it helps us to create autonomy within activists. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people can empower themselves by participating in the movement. And another question. Uh, you were talking about the differences between professional activists and students. Okay. Now, what was the relation between them? It's quite uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult because there is a gap between them, but uh, we try to uh, to uh, cut that, that gap by going talking to them, by organizing yeah. stuff, and not because we function on mass uh, unionism, yeah. which is different from uh, affinity groups, which work more or less close. So it uh, it design uh, club uh, disengage us from our small group of activists mm -hmm. who can talk to people and we tend to uh, not to hide our discourse but if we uh, me for myself I am an anti capitalist but uh, tuition fees is clearly a social democrat uh, measure uh, and no it's a neoliberalism measure but. Uh, keeping it is a social democrat's uh, way of, of yeah, you're, politics. Yeah, you are trying to put it in a liberal discourse, not yeah. a ra radical, radical discourse. discourse. Yeah. But it's depends. If, if I know that the person in front yeah. of me is a radical, okay. uh, I'm going to have a radical discourse, yeah. so he can join, join not me, but us, <laughs> in uh, the activity. Yeah. <laughs> it's propaganda. I know. We're at war. <laughs> I would suggest that we have question at the end. No, but it's because it's the um, the first part, and after I will do uh, another one. But oh, okay. maybe if, if there is too much, I will uh, okay. end uh, the question. What, what is your relationship with the uh, lobbyist organization? Lobbyist organization. That's a really good question. Um, usually we hate them as they hate us, yeah. and <laughs> but it's depend for. The, the movement of 2012, we had um, we had a strategy towards them because in 2005 we had a general strike and we uh, put a lot of effort in it and the the lobby uh, the lobbying uh, organization they they were on strike like at the end for one week and they cut the deal with the government without us being at the table because we were targeting as being violent because we encourage uh, their direct action and so stuff like that. So this time we were we don't want it to happen again. So we we, we did two things. First, we said uh, we sat uh, sat with them and said, okay, we can conclude some argument like we are going to do this manifestation together. We are going to uh, be uh, all together in the negotiation so with. Uh, small agreement but you know people can just throw away the paper and, and don't listen and we try to isolate them by being stronger than, than them and at this point we uh, create the class which is the coalition large de la c 
which is a large coalition of the, the union. And uh, by doing so, we could... Um, so one, piece, yeah. one guy come in the outside? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, but we will continue. Um, uh, so uh, to isolate them, we open up our structure to uh, a new member that doesn't need to to um, pay for being a member and stuff like that. It, it was easier for them to, to, to become part of the movement. So we can have a union that were not with SAR with the lobbying. And we can have a small union that was part of the lobbying. Wait a minute. Do you have paid members? Uh, no, it's because the, the student union have money okay. on a local level, okay. but the big union uh, on a national level, they don't have any funding from from the students. So the local union gave money from, like, if you have uh, 3,000 members. Oh, you can so. Yeah, so they, they, they just put, uh, they just check in, like, if they got uh, $20 for each student, they say, okay, I will give $2 for each member okay. to Absolutely. the national union. Okay. So at this point, uh, we try to isolate them by uh, adding those members from other, from the lobbying uh, part inside our structure. So those ones put pressure on the lobbying uh, union to not uh, negotiate without us and not to screw us over. So, yeah. yeah uh, you were talking for, for the uh, for the strike to be effective. You need uh, a lot of people for them to come. You need you organize assemblies mm -hmm. where you also have to have a lot of people so that the word spreads, right? Yeah. And then w w when you're uh, making assemblies, you rely on activism, on talking to people that they know what's going on and that they come. Yeah. How, do, how do you get enough activists that this plays out, that the numbers play out? Oof, it's a good question, but um, I don't know. Um, we just, usually we just reach to activists by, by saying we need to organize, we need to to, 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 to be strong, so come with us, we're going to put the fight together. So, uh, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, much. so it, it's not. It's not. Um, it's a pretty small group of people that is doing this, or um, on a on a local level, yes. But when you put every uh, college and every university together, that's been yeah. a, a larger group. For like me, uh, when I was in. in College. It was a college, not really uh, activist, but we were like ten for I don't know uh, eight thousand, and it was really really tough, and we did not succeed because there was too much uh, uh, reactionary forces or uh, <laughs> like this. <laughs> and but in in some <coughs> more activist campus, maybe they are fifty or twenty five, and it doesn't need that much people to cover or to, to do the job, but you have to be <laughs> there really uh, a lot of time, so it's a battle. And did you have a question? Yeah, it was sort of a similar, because that's a common problem that at one point there are maybe 10 people left that actually do all the work and yeah. they get exhausted. So, so my question was just very simple, and it, it was like how many uh, people actually form the core of the union to do this, but this was a similar question. Yeah, so. but with, with the escalation of tactic, uh, you have more and more activism. Uh, activists move on to do mobilization and to do, uh, how can I help, what can I do to to fight back those those contributions. So if there is no, okay. just a long one. how do you make sure that people don't go to classes? Uh, how do you make sure like yeah how we enforce the strike. Yeah. yeah. There is a uh, two things. First was the legitimacy that I was talking before. So uh, we said to people there won't be any classes. 
Yeah. After the vote, we don't do the vote and after we go uh, empty the classes. Mm -hmm. We say usually maybe we have a vote on the 15th and we say on the 20th it will be the date of the strike. Oh, okay. So on this day and for the five next day we're gonna go and tell people this day we are gonna we are going to be on strike. There is a demo that you can go. Uh, on the morning there will be a a council or uh, a small uh, G, uh, general assembly of the striker, so people gather and they, and it's it is important to have something to do when you are on strike. You don't don't go on strike and just be on strike. And after that, we go class by class to be sure that there is no course in it. And when there is, and the teachers want to give this course uh, beside of the, the vote. We are shouting, we are disrupting the course until... That's how I got expelled doing this. Yeah, <laughs> me too, but... Not, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about so The teachers don't uh, cooperate, they, I mean, or... We're just shutting our... Uh, it's a wall uh, from outside and he cannot give his, his course. And usually there is not a lot of students inside uh, mm -hmm. the class. Because people tend to have experience uh, a strike before, so they know. No. So they, if they are, if they didn't agree with it, they stay at home. But sometimes, th that's why I call them reactionary because they they want to put a fight with mm. the the leftists or the the, the people. Yeah. Everybody from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to complete your question, please. Uh, vous expliquez en anglais, moi je, euh, je propose cette question de français, d'accord Oui, pas de problème. Et puis, hein, est-ce que vous avez des fédérations d'inter de l'université d'étudiants de vous Vous êtes étudiant d'inter de... Euh, je suis étudiant d'inter de l'université. D'une université, de université. Du université ouais. Oui, je suis étudiant. Ouais. Euh, maintenant, vous êtes fait quoi c est, c est, c est, c est, euh, Euh, avec vous êtes fait pour les questions, pour les problèmes, tout seul, ou mais sinon avec la, en plus les étudiants euh... Pour parler, pour... Euh, si je suis tout seul Ouais. Non. Non. Nous sommes beaucoup. Vous, êtes, vous avez beaucoup. Oui. Est-ce que vous avez des euh, si solutions avec de, ce problème le, le, Mais c'est quoi le problème Le problème de laisser votre... Euh, tous les étudiants, mais il y a de, de, maintenant des étudiants. Il y a des problèmes, même chez vous. Vous voulez des études internationales Oui. Ah oui. Euh, ça, c'est bah, un problème, mais habituellement, c'est. Non, vous expliquez en fait. Mon problème. Non, mais je ne suis pas sûr de comprendre bien la question. C'est pour ça que je okay. Tu parles des, des étudiants internationaux Oui. Qui. Ah euh, oui. Donc, à ce niveau-là, il est parlé de international student. Yeah. Uh, which uh, come like Erasmus or stuff like that, and they are not. They, there is not a lot of students. They don't form a majority, or this is really a small part. And usually, uh, it is. It is not a problem, but uh, it's sure that it's difficult for them to to uh, understand or be involved in the struggle because it's not. They are. Uh, they don't know the politics. They don't. They don't feel that they are, uh, in, in a certain way, being uh, affected, affected by that, by this because they don't pay the same uh, price for the university there. But sometimes we can we can uh, argue with them because in uh, during uh, 1996. There was a deal between the lobbyists and the government to end a strike, and the lobbyists uh, imposed uh, the different uh, tuition fees for the international students. It was a really a racist measure that the, that those union put uh, towards uh, international students, so they, they pay more uh, for university. But except from that, uh, usually because it's uh, it's based on majority. Uh, and sometimes they just don't really care about student unions, union or stuff like that. So they 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 stay at home, they do their own work, and they 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 wait until the strike is over and they go back. So 
is good. Yeah. I'll uh, pursue on the strike of 2012. Um, so this strike was to um, it was uh, against uh, a measure made by the liberal government, which is the so-called right-wing government, but right or left are quite the same in Quebec. Uh, so uh, it was a tuition. Uh, it was a hike of tuition fees that was uh, going to raise it by. Uh, 75%, so it was quite a lot of, <coughs> of money. And uh, at this point, we knew from, uh, we started the campaign on the year uh, 2010, when the government said that they will increase the tuition fee. At this time, we, we were not, it was not fixed, the, we didn't know how much, but we knew we knew already that it was going to happen. And because, we, if we go back just a little bit uh, backward, in 2007 there was already a uh, uh, tuition hike, tuition fees hike, and we uh, tried to stop it with a general strike, but we failed. Uh, so at this time, we knew that because the hike was from 2007 to 2012, and we quite knew that they will do another one in 2012. So, uh, in that time, we said, okay, let's take our time and the next time we're gonna stop it. So, in 2010, they announced it. So, we, uh, we produce, we uh, had some reflection, we produce uh, material against the hike, propose some alternative discourse and stuff like that and uh, put some demos and we, we talked a lot about the, the tuition hike. In 2011, there was, uh, the, the government uh, made the law that uh, proposed the uh, tuition hike. There was, at this time, there was a demo uh, and occupation of a building and a one-day strike uh, that was made by the union. Uh, it was uh, at the end of the, the winter and we knew, at this time, we knew that if we want to succeed in having a general strike, we would have to do it in 2012 by the So, uh, during uh, Autumn of uh, 2011, we made a one-day strike, which was a real success. We had uh, 200,000 people on strike that day, and we made a big demo with uh, 30,000 people uh, in it, which was really a uh, really big demo for for Montreal. It's it's really a big one. Usually, student uh, demo who are really big, it's like five. 5,000. So, at this point, we knew that we had a big movement that will start in the winter. Uh, at this point, we have all done all of the strategies of the escalation of tactic, and it didn't work. So, students in college and in university knew for two years that the general strike was coming, that the tuition fee was an uh, anti-social measure and they knew that the general strike was the only option. So, uh, the people who were uh, more the strategic, uh, of the strategic uh, activists aimed for a, a strike that will uh, land like six or nine a week, launch it into three waves because we don't launch general strike uh, all together, we do it like with waves, or so the first wave maybe uh, 20,000 people. We uh, do it like with the more radical union, and after that we call out the other union to join us. So at this time, the, the first wave, uh, it's, it's, it's really important in the escalation of the strike, because do, by doing so, in the radical union, people have free time once the strike is enforced, and so people can leave 
to go every day at class and do homework and stuff like that. So they can go in other uh, college and other university, do propaganda mobilization. So we put some uh, flying squad that goes to other place, convince people from 8 in the morning to uh, 6 in the, in the evening by talking to everybody, give, give a hand to the local activists. And in those places, usually you have like three or four or five activists. So when you have four people that are coming and help you, it's really give you a confidence in the in people. So we started the strike on the uh, 3rd of February, which was uh, more or less uh, one uh, one month after the, the beginning of the semester. At this time, uh, we just put uh, the flying squad, some demos, maybe one, one per week, stuff like that. And on the 7th of March, which was more or less three weeks after the, the, the beginning of the strike, we were maybe 45,000 uh, 45, people on strike. We did our first uh, political uh, mass action. We occupied a building uh, of the government, which was the lottery building in uh, downtown Montreal. We occupied it, but we, uh, with a big demo, like 3,000 3, people, I don't know, less, maybe, maybe 7,000, 7, uh, 700 people. Uh, and there was people inside who were occupying, and there was people outside protecting the people who were inside. The riot cops uh, attacked us. There was, uh, there was no particular violence against the cops, but they, they uh, hit with the baton, they, they throw uh, grenades, uh, like a, a flash, flash line grenades on us, and even one student lose one eye. At this time, people were really pissed off because we were on strike for uh, Three weeks, the government said that we were not on strike, just boycotting our class, that we are uh, that that we are not legitimate to uh, do the strike. Why the law? Uh, because this is uh, what's the symbolism? Uh, it's just to attack the government. It's always to attack government or to attack capitalists. Uh, oh, okay, and you chose the law. Yeah, this time you chose the law. Right? So other times you choose education. Some other times you choose. Uh, electricity. Uh, no, I was wondering why you occupy the lottery. That, that's it. Yeah, and it's it's a building with the lottery, but there is a, all the administrator of the all you, of the university. There, there are. Are they uh, on the same? In yeah, the same, same building. building. But oh, okay. it, it was a uh, I've been in the lottery too. We don't care that much about. Uh, okay, the about the lottery. So when the, the students lose lose an eye to uh, police brutality. People were really pissed off, and in the media, it was like, oh, okay, because the strike was not really talking, but now that there was political uh, uh, police brutalities, uh, chaos in the street, and even one person getting uh, injured for life, there was uh, media start really to uh, talk about what we had uh, there, and they said. Uh, why not negotiate with the student? And so, at this point, more and more, uh, it, it's legitimate the direct action because we saw that when we uh, do some uh, perturbation, uh, disruption in the city or with the government, it worked because people are talking about us because the government don't sit with us, but still, they are pissed off. And if they are pissed, we are with, or we are making some point. So, uh, at this point, we, uh, on the 22 of March, we had uh, a, a big demo that was uh, uh, strategically called at this time, because it would have been like six weeks that we are, we are on being on strike. The lobbyists, uh, were uh, putting for uh, a day of strike at these days because we made the demo with them and the demo was uh, really a success and the strike too. At this time, for, for that day, we were 
300,000 on strike, which was 75% uh, of all the students in the province. And the demo gathered uh, 200,000 people, which was the biggest of all the history of Quebec. Uh, it was a, a demo, uh, a really boring one, but a lot of people, I think you can see, uh, there is a... Uh, and you can see, uh, this is, you can see it's from a building, but there is a lot of picture from, it, it was clearly amazing how big it was. And this was a banner that said, uh, the 22 of March is only the beginning, with the symbol of class. Because it was a demo with the lobbyists, we wanted to have our uh, symbol and that we won't get stole the demo by the lobbyists. So, I'm sorry, but how do you define the lobbyists? I didn't understand that. Who are the lobbyists? Uh, the other federation. Okay, the other federation that obviously just... Uh, yeah, close to the government. Close to the government. Okay. At the end of the strike, one of the leaders, because there are three, three uh, federations, one of them uh, got elected with uh, the, 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 the ruling party. Oh, okay. Right. And it's quite, it's quite an asset. But, yeah. So, uh, at this time, and maybe I can just uh, say a, a few words on uh, the red square. It is a symbol that uh, we use for maybe uh, 2003 was the introduction of the symbol. It is the symbol of uh, AC or class. It's mean, uh, it's, it could mean a lot of stuff, but Usually it's more uh, represented by uh, an addition to the, sin uh, the union and for the fight to, uh, to education and free education. Because at the, at the center of ASE, there is this, uh, this thing that we call free education. We, we want free education, but we don't put fight for it. It's, so people, uh, when the, the strike beginning, uh, was beginning, uh, there is, was more and more people who were wearing this and there was a lot of graffiti in the streets because it's really easy to do, you just have to take uh, any uh, tissue and you can make it all by yourself, it's really uh, DIY. So, um, and you can see it uh, in the street whenever you just spit it on uh, your jacket and stuff so people can recognize can be recognized between uh, each other and not just only at school. So this became the symbol of this stuff. So at this time, with the, this big march, the government uh, told us that uh, but they never talked to us directly, only through media. And they say that uh, they won't listen to us, they won't, they, they won't negotiate with us. So we were, for us at this moment, we were thinking, okay, it's going to end really soon. So we have to put more pressure, more pressure. So uh, when uh, on the end of March and the beginning of April, uh, the class, uh, which uh, called for a week of economic disruption. This was uh, quite an important time for for, it, uh, for the movement, because uh, at this time we call for uh, an action every day of the week, for one week, and we say, okay, we're on strike, you don't listen to us, and we're gonna uh, piss you off. But at this time, what we did is, each morning, usually it's, it was more or less the same, we do a demo, we gather people at a place, and we hit a target. And, and what we were doing, because we had a new way of doing uh, uh, action. Usually, occupation is a good way to to do stuff and disrupt uh, some uh, some institution. But because of uh, the cops and all the repression, occupation can be uh, tough because you are inside the building and you're you're trapped. And the, the cops can arrest you really easily. So we made blockade. 
which means you are arrived in the morning in front of a building and you don't let anyone, you do picket line in front of that building. So, uh, a building of the government or a building of a uh, big economic bank or stuff like that. And you do it as long as you can. After that, maybe. after one hour, riot cops are coming, they, uh, we try to negotiate with them, they don't listen. They, come, they start to attack us and people just leave. But we did that every, uh, every day. Some of the times we did on a bridge, which was really uh, tough for um, everybody because you stop the, the, the transport of all the workers and it really pissed the government and the people the, the bourgeoisie because you disrupt the economy. So at this point, we made that uh, for one week, and after that we made it like one or two days a week. It was called by the class, but the class did not organize it. It was done by the activists, and because uh, the union uh, is really uh, has this uh, concept of. Uh, diversity of tactic, which means that we don't judge people who are black block, people who do uh, more AP stuff, or do sit-in, and people who do direct action. So everybody can do whatever they want. And uh, the class did not, they called for it, but they didn't organize it. It was organized by affinity groups, so they cannot be held responsible for it in court, but they were uh, account for them in the media, in, uh, for the government, and stuff like that. Just, so, yeah. just something to clarify. Yeah. You said they were striking for several weeks, but mm -hmm. they were just like, two big protests and then the disruption. So in the meantime, we were just like every day checking the classrooms, if they're really empty, or did you use the, the classrooms for your, like, no, they, they, what did it mean that the campus is actually empty or what was it? It depends on which campus. Um, usually we uh, we were going out to other place mm -hmm. to do uh, to the flying squad. Mm -hmm. And but in the end uh, during the month of March there was always because in Montreal there is something particular. In the spring it's especially in March there is at least one major demos per week, but it's not always for uh, students. Mm -hmm. Like on the 8th of March, it's the International Day of Women. On the 15th, there is a, a, a tradition uh, demos against police brutality, which turned every time into riot. And during this year's, it was a really big riot. Like 5,000 people, usually we are, uh, we are 3,000, so. It it's was a day of protest against police. Yeah, it was, it's, uh, it's kind of it's Montreal stuff. <laughs> they really don't like it. But uh, uh, I will talk in my other uh, workshop about that. Okay, well, <laughs> um, and there was uh, usually people because it was a movement that was not uh, just made by the the union. People organized stuff by their own. There was class in the street. There was stuff. Uh, there was always a thing to do for the movement. There was some smaller demos. There was there was always something. But I tend to uh, to pass rapidly yeah. on, on all but the stuff. So but to clarify, yeah. it was more of a sort of like almost uh, occupation, or it was more just um, putting your energy into the yeah, organizing different events around the city. Or yeah, it's, it's more more or less. Yeah. It was go out of the mm -hmm. university and don't. Don't uh, always be inside. So during April, uh, there was uh, there was at a certain moment there was those uh, right wing student who uh, didn't agree with the strike who asked the court uh, to have access to the course on the basic of uh, liberal uh, law because you can you cannot. Uh, you have no legal right to strike, so the judge, the judge granted them a court order that the court should be given because they have paid for it and 
blah 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 with like the, the liberal system. I like how you refer to it, the liberal system. Yeah, it's the liberal system. We are our collective uh, yeah, community uh, law or or how we uh, create that. So the the, the court order uh, told that the court should be given. So at this moment we didn't really know what to do because we uh, knew that if we didn't obey to this uh, we can be in trouble. But uh, the, even the people who are opposed to the strike said that you cannot force people, you, you cannot overcome the, the collective decision. It's, it's, it's not about the question of legit, legitimacy that I was talking before. It's, it's really important because people felt that the decision that we made in our General Assembly was, uh, effect, uh, was the, the, the right thing and you cannot overpass it even if you disagree. It's the democracy. At this point, so uh, we uh, and, and because it was like it's one individual who wanted to have his uh, his court, his course. Uh, people were uh, were blocking. We're still blocking some university or some other times. Uh, people let him have access to his court, but within uh, with doing a wall of shame, like. You have to travel uh, to go through all the people and be like scab, scab, and things like that. And teacher were in solidarity too. So the teacher gave him a course about uh, a conflict solution or about uh, uh, the respect of democracy and stuff like that. So at this time, these injunctions were uh, not working. And by the same time, um, and in the media, they, they say that we didn't respect the law, that we were violent, and so on, so on. And on the 20, the 20th of, of April, there was a convention for the Plan A of the, the government of Quebec. And the, the Plan A, which is the North Plant, is uh, to do mining uh, in the north of Quebec on uh, native land. So a lot of people in the province opposed it. But, uh, you know, you, you don't really have a, a leverage against the government for, for this, this thing. And they were uh, putting a convention with all the, the companies and the people who, who wanted a job so they can meet, blah, blah, blah. And we call it for a disruption of this event by the, by the government. And it was downtown Montreal and rapidly we uh, we, um, we could enter within the building with our small people, like five, 500, 500 people, and there was riot cops waiting for us inside. It was, it was quite a mess, and, and so we get back to the street, and the people try to enter. The cops um, fired rubber bullets on us, hit us with batons, but the people were really pissed, and it turned into a big riot, one of the biggest riots of the strike, because it was during the day, and there was this point, the, the convention center, and the people were just uh, attacking it from different points, with different uh, demos, and stuff like that, so the cops were really exhausted, and after that, in the media, it was uh, really uh, difficult uh, for, for us, and even for the government, because the, the conflict was continuing and they didn't want to negotiate with us. So, at this point, they said that uh, uh, we were violent and they won't uh, negotiate with the class and they, were list, they, were, uh, they want to negotiate, but first we have to stop the violence and condemn the violence. But, at this time, the lobbying uh, were okay. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go do a, a, a negotiation. But uh, class said we cannot condemn violence. We have to wait until the Congress, which is the assembly that took the decision, to vote on it. Yeah. And the people were really pissed at us because we were. Uh, 
uh, make them uh, wait another, another week to have a general assembly which can condemn the violence. And finally, we uh, made uh, a small... Uh, we, how to say it? We condemn violence against individual, except in the case of uh, legitimate defense, uh, uh, when people attack you. But they wanted us so to condemn the violence against property. And that was not uh, possible for, for us because we agree on violence against property. Or not that we choose to. And at this time, uh, because of the lobbying could not negotiate without us, because we were really strong, uh, the government said, okay, okay, let, let, let's negotiate with, with that. And um, they offered us um, some, uh, how to say it, the, the strike was originally in five years, and they put it in seven years, so it was less per year but more in the end so people were okay all of this for having that offer it's not negotiation it's you're just ki you're just kidding and people do a, another demo and so the strike went on and on and on and after that uh, we are in the end of, of uh, April there is a, a convention of the Liberal Party which uh, was in like around the 14 uh, of May in a small town not so far off Montreal and everybody went, well not everybody but uh, a lot of students, a lot of workers and a lot of people from a social group came to that convention doing the demos and it turned out to be another riot that long for I don't know, four hours. It was in a small town with a lot of stone just nearby the hostel where the convention was held and there was riot police but they could not move because they are in big armor, big soup and all those uh, all those uh, images that were in the media said uh, forced the, the government to renegotiate with us and finally, they, they agree on uh, an, uh, something with, uh, I don't know, they made an offer that the people in the negotiation uh, room signed, but they were, they were uh, I don't know, uh, they changed the, the, the offer at the end, and the people signed it, and they say, okay, the, the strike is done because people have signed it. But when the people were out of the negotiation room and present the paper to other people, they say, okay, but it's said that we have an agreement and the, the strike is over. But because of the form of the class with direct democracy, uh, and we don't, the, the negotiation team did not have any power to accept any offer. It's the the General Assembly can say it's okay. okay. And the offer was really bad. So, at, during the evening of that day, there was a huge demo in the night, which was, uh, this offer is, uh, they are just uh, spitting on us, the, it's not a real offer, we want more. And the people made a demo and called it, uh, there was a, a a slogan or a motto during the, the demos said uh, one demo per night until the victory. So at that time, with one slogan, we made another one on the next day and another one and another one. And all the General Assembly said that the, uh, the, the offer of the government was not enough, so the strike continued. Yeah, but you're talking about negotiations negotiations with the government, didn't you have specific uh, demands? Yeah, and of the tradition, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, so you wanted to negotiate, I mean, didn't you want, okay, we want this, no negotiation? No, but for, for us, 
negotiation is not it's not really for us arguments with fear. Strategically do you think that's that's best, you know, we have demands but we're willing to negotiate. Uh, at that point, yes, because we have to 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 Come play on. a game with, with them. But we knew that if they made an offer like, okay, we're gonna cut the, the hike by 50% uh, or by 80%, uh, maybe the General Assembly will, will say, okay, it's okay, it's enough, we have to do something, so let's go back, uh, let's go back to, to class and let's go back to school and stop the, the strike. But they didn't offer, they, they offered yeah, their very, offer was very, very, very low. So at this time, uh, people said, okay, one, one, uh, one demos per night until the victory. Those demos has lasted for three months, like more than uh, an hundred, a hundred night of demos in Montreal, all night long, uh, and some of them finish at four o'clock in the morning. People were a little bit crazy to ask me, but they, they tend to like it. And at this point, there was no more uh, negotiation with the government. Uh, we uh, we arrived at the point where the government said, "Okay, we're gonna make a special law, like in the in the workers, in, uh, when the workers are on strike, the government can pass a law that said there is no more strike. You you we fix the condition of the convention, the, the condition of work." and you go back, you cannot do the strike, and if you do, you can go to jail, or you can lose money, or stuff like that. It's worked like this in negotiation with the government, with the worker, on the public, uh, for the public workers. So at this point, uh, they, they made a special law that was really, really uh, tough for us, because the law said that um, the semester was uh, postponed, uh, so there was no more, the, the strike was no more effective, and there was no semester of summer, and uh, that we cannot do any more strike in the students, that the people were forced, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, patient, we cannot uh, block someone to go to the spot. The street restrict somebody to go to school and that for the, 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 the worker, like uh, the teacher or anybody who works in the school cannot uh, with meetings or by omission uh, restrict the access to the class. And beside that, they made a, uh, in the law, it was illegal to have a manifestation of more uh, a demos of more than 50 people if you don't give the direction of the demos. And people see that restriction as really undemocratic. And so uh, people were really, uh, some of the people, because all the rightists were, okay, that's good, that's a good measure, but for all the people who were on strike, who supported the strike, it was really an awful law because it didn't just apply to the student, it was applied to everyone, every uh, leftist or left group or people who do demos were affected by that. So uh, in response, people were, okay, what can we do? There was still these demos that were going on, on night by night and they were crushed, uh, oh, and the, the special law and uh, one thing, uh, it raises the, when you get arrested, the, the, the fees of, of, uh, of the punishment to being arrested was really, really, uh, really high. And you cannot call a demo, for, uh, and the group, if a group calls for a demo, or invite people to a demo that were illegal, they will have to pay a really huge fine. And even they can, they can the, the official can go to jail. So at this point, it was really uh, undemocratic for a lot of people in the 
the, the, the movement and it really pissed off the people. But the people were fearing the law and at this time we were on the fourth, uh, 14th, uh, we were on the 18th of May, something like that. And there was a, a demo that was coming on the 22 because each 22 there was a big demo each month. There was a big demo of, I don't know, thousands and thousands thousand of people. And class uh, stood and said, okay, we're going to define, define this law uh, on the basis of, uh, of uh, non-violent uh, resistance. Non -violent resistance. Yeah, non-violent direct, direct action resistance like Gandhi or stuff like that. So they say, okay, we won't um, obey to the law and the people uh, were going to the manifestation, uh, to the demos and there was thousands of people who defied, defied the law and the law could not be effective because there was so much people who who were not uh, respecting it, and even the cops did not arrest anybody under this law. They arrest people during the night, and because there was a, a demo each night, they arrested people, and those people uh, were charges for uh, just illegal uh, demo. And like four, four or five days later, people were still, how can we uh, respond to this law. And they, uh, people came with an idea that was inspired by uh, the movement in Argentina during uh, the end of the dic uh, dictatorship, which was a, a, a movement of pot and dance, which in French is in Casco. And so the people gathered on their balconies or uh, just outside of their their window, and they were eating like this for 20 minutes each uh, each day at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. This movement were from the balcony to uh, to the street, but not to the street, but to a place uh, on, on the street or just on the sidewalk or in cars, stuff like that, and. This movement uh, grew for day by day, and after five days, this movement uh, take, took the street in, in a lot of neighborhoods in Montreal, and uh, in the end, even outside of Quebec, in uh, the, the western part of Canada, and even in some place in the US, there was uh, some gathering of pot and pans movement and demos in solidarity with us. So at this point, we, uh, the, the, the movement was intergenerational. It was not just the students, it was the, 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 the tuition uh, fees and the hike was uh, really a, a long, long history. It was, not, it was no more that, it was social change. It was people started to call it call the, the movement and for myself I don't agree with it because it's colonialist but they, they started to apply it uh, maple spring which means uh, in French is printemps érable and in French uh, Arab spring is printemps arabe which is more, it sounds more or less the same but uh, except from that uh, the movement was no more a uh, student issue it was a social issue and with the summer uh, arriving and all the vacation and stuff like that, and because we didn't have any more place to organize ourselves, like we didn't have school, and people started to work because there was a lot of people who work during the summer, especially the students because they don't have a lot of money, the movement was going down, but we were sure that uh, when the semester will uh, continue, that the strike will continue and that the movement will continue. By this time, the government called for a general election, and at this time, it was their democracy versus our democracy, and it was really difficult for us because we don't have any 
place in Parliament, but not just because we don't have place in Parliament. It's because we cannot play their game and win. So we uh, the the Liberal government was uh, lost the election, which was uh, another government, uh, another party, which is PQ, which is more nationalist and more social democrat, if we can say social democracy. Uh, and they were uh, one of the promises was to retract uh, uh, the law and to uh, to um, not not apply the tuition hike. So in some terms, uh, when those uh, the, when the new government was formed, the all all, all of what we stand for. Uh, was okay, but when the movement started to grow, we had some other demands. And for that, I don't know if, uh, but it couldn't be um, be done by parliament uh, party or whatever. But except from that, uh, we have uh, succeeded in building. Uh, a strong movement, a lot of solidarity, influ, a lot of pra practice, uh, activist practice, uh, education, and people tend to s are less apathetic or less uh, cynical between politics and between uh, toward uh, the youth and toward social change. So that's that's it for now, and if. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions, yeah. I have a question. I mean, you obviously, well, you based your strikes on a very generous culture of protest in Canada. I mean, uh, you said that this hadn't happened for 40 years, right? But obviously, you somehow got people to, to get out in massive numbers. So I'm wondering how, what, what was the I mean, just your actions did that, or was it past actions that really influenced people? Yeah. Um, I think there was a, a lot of... Um, it was not just us who made this possible. We were in a, in a time, in a conjunct conjuncture, that was uh, really uh, good for us, because it was a government that was elected uh, in 2001, so it was a. Uh, they were uh, tired of. Yeah, yeah you know uh, you like know the, the decay of uh, yeah, power. Yeah, the decay of power, and they had made a lot of people angry with all their uh, neoliberalism uh, measure, stuff like that, and so and people didn't like the prime minister amongst, especially amongst social democrats. Uh, uh, um, the people in, uh, especially the people in Montreal, who are maybe more uh, leftist than the rest. Are that, the that's what I was talking about. I mean, as a history, does Canada have like revolutionary identity, and, uh, or, or or has it just begun? I mean, it's it's quite. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, revolutionary identity can be uh, used. Uh, I think it's maybe a, a, a too strong word, yeah, but strong, yeah. uh, I can talk more for for Quebec because Quebec within Canada it's it's, it's kind of special because there are two different history and the two of them are not uh, not really linked. We call it uh, the two solitude because the francophone and the anglophone tend to ignore. Uh, or then one and another, and there was, a, especially in the 60s and in the 70s, in Montreal and within uh, the province of Quebec, there was a lot of uh, activity. There was a because because of, of this uh, solitude and the independence movement uh, were really strong in the 60s because the francophone were poorer, didn't have access to a uh, lot of jobs. Yeah, they were isolated. Yeah, they see themselves as colonized by the 
by the, the, the angle. And in some point, it was real, but some other points, uh, it, was, it was not the same as some uh, people in South America or in Africa or, I don't know, uh, Algeria, or like that. So at this point, they had uh, this uh, liberation front of Quebec, which uh, uh, did some bomb, kidnapped uh, a minister, a diplomat, and after that there was a measure of war. I mean, In those times, it was, it was the like revolutionary, the it was, it was it seen as a revolutionary moment of the history of, of Quebec. Oh, okay. So, people, there is a lot of people who, who uh, see that moment and uh, idealize it, but uh, and beside of that, there is a strong. Uh, there was the uh, Marxist Leninist was really strong in the late 70s. They tend to try to organize people in the factories and stuff like that, and it was not the same in the, in the uh, anglophone parts of Canada. So there is. And the unionism is quite, uh, there is more unionism in Quebec than in the rest of the Canada. But me, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a nationalist, I'm an anti-nationalist. And I think sometimes the leftists in Quebec tend to uh, see themselves as better than they are really. And, so, and that they are more progressive than others. But me for myself, uh, I don't know, it's maybe because they uh, organize more on masses level than on affinity or uh, yeah, individual, individual uh, rights that uh, in the Anglo-Saxon Anglo culture are more uh, strong. So at this time, uh, at this point, we can say that, yeah, there is some kind of mm -hmm. tendency to one. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, demonstrations usually, even if they're big at the beginning, tend to water down like in a few weeks or a month. How did you manage to, to hold the numbers for three months? Um, there is a, we didn't do uh, all the job, the government and the police help us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. The police by beating us, harassing <laughs> us. It was like now I will talk more uh, in the uh, other workshop. But we had like uh, three, three thousand five hundred people who get arrested by the police for uh, participation in demos or other stuff like that. And there are more, maybe more than three, three hundred people who were arrested with criminal charge and now facing uh, uh, maybe jail or just fines or uh, so they, the, the police with all their brutality and all their repression helped us a lot and the government for not uh, sitting with us at the table or didn't recognize the, the movement helped us a lot to um, create um, uh, yeah, support and the people were pissed off because of that. They, they, they see themselves as their, uh, their demand was not that big, it was not, it, it was legit, uh, legitimate. The, so by, by doing so, the, the question just grew up. And so maybe it's, it's how the, the movement became bigger and bigger, the snowball effects. So. Yeah, the police and the government are usually stupid enough to, 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 to act that way. But, um, was there any solidarity support for the people that got arrested or got some fights? Because that's an important thing. If you promise to the people, right, if you get into trouble, the community is going to help you. Um, yeah, that's a really important thing for us. Um, it was uh, just before the strike, we uh, create a committee which was called uh, uh, juridical uh, aid committees, which was a part of the class, which uh, tend to organize uh, all the defense for all, everybody who, uh, who will be arrested during the strike, and not just the students, and not just the, 
the member of class or anything. And so it was really important for us to uh, inscribe solidarity uh, against repression. So uh, we um, we have our um, uh, lawyer already because the social movement in Montreal are really uh, the the police is uh, quite uh, quite uh, rough with us, or they are really good to arrest people, and there is a lot of uh, mass arrest in, in Montreal. It's it's not the same in, than in the rest part. The, the, the rest of uh, North America, they, they don't just beat us, they arrest us a lot. So uh, we have those lawyers, and so we put up these uh, legal committees, committees and uh, we try to have money from uh, uh, the student union, we chip in inside the park, and there was uh, people who can donate money, and the, like the union, the worker union can give us money, and at, in the uh, when the, the movement went bigger and the repression became bigger, uh, we collected a lot of money and we had, uh, especially from uh, the, the workers union because they are they have a lot of money. They gave us uh, quite a uh, quite a lot of money. It's um, a couple of, of uh, ten thousand dollars, like maybe. Uh, $50,000 in legal aid for, the, for, for us through these committees. But uh, it's, it's kind of difficult because now the movement is, is, is done, but the repression by the state is not done for everybody. The, 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 the process the, are, are still going on. And, so me, as an example, uh, I, I was arrested uh, two times during the strike, and one, one is finished, uh, and the other one will finish, I don't know, uh, maybe in a month or in six months, but I know that some people will have to face uh, 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 process until uh, 2050. Oh. Yeah, it's quite long, and you know, there, there is a, a strong accusation there are even people who are accused of terrorism, so like that. So that's I will more talk in the other part about more about the activists and what what they they did. And mm -hmm. So uh, it was really important for us, and uh, I think it maybe was the, the best idea uh, just before the strike. Because without that, we were all in in big trouble. Mm -hmm. So the labor unions supported you actively. Yeah, but not really actively, but they, they wanted to, but they fear that their uh, members uh, won't, uh, they fear a backlash from the, their members, so they help us by uh, solidarity uh, message and by giving us money, but never by organizing really anything. Mm -hmm. Because they are, they don't want to fight because they fear the they fear the state and they fear their own members and yeah and they fear the law because they cannot go on strike as they want. Yeah, so, um, how, how much supporters the supporters does the government have? It, it's depend. Uh, it's depend how you 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 calculate it. Uh, if it's in the the, the broader population, it it depend on. Uh, at which moment of the strike? In the beginning, maybe uh, seventy percent for the government, thirty for us. And the more the conflict was uh, going on, the more support we we had. But uh, if you look at uh, institutional level, the administration of university and college were uh, with the government. The all the uh, uh, bourgeoisie was with the government all of the uh, newspaper and uh, you know um, commenter uh, journalists were more or less with the government some were with us uh, especially some journalists but you know the all the media the mainstream media they are controlled by uh, big capitalists so they didn't uh, they were not with us but uh, in the end it's it's not uh, really necessary to have their their approval because they are 
Yeah, uh, you said that by now the movement is finished. So, yeah. my first question is why? I mean, and, and the second, uh, did you really, did you really um, focus exclusively on the, on the uh, question of tuition fees? Um, I mean, why not open like other uh, wider social questions and um, form, I don't know, other demands for social change? I mean, Direct democracy would be one possible if your movement was based on it. Um. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's a good question. Um, for the, the end of the movement, it's more or less because the, there was an election, so in, in general, people, apart from the activists, they, they, they seem that we are here. So there is no, no nothing to fight on. And even the people who agreed to have a social change, for them, the election was, was the social change. Was, it was good enough for them. And uh, apart from that, I think people uh, see that, what else can we do? Because we did that, we, have, we, we managed to, to create a social unrest in, in the province, but now uh, we don't have this momentum because we're not in more strike, there is not all those demos, and the repression was really hard on the activists, but in the population in general. Uh, and now we are facing a lot of uh, new law that against uh, demonstration, because uh, I already told that the, the special law was removed, but they, they passed other law to, uh, for all the demos, and now, we have really we have difficulty. We have a lot of difficulty to have demos um, that are not arrested by the police. Because even if we were if we are better now than we were before the strike, the police is better now than before the strike. Yeah, so it's, it's now, now now you don't have the momentum. When you have two hundred thousand people on the streets, you yeah. had what well, you could form like other demands which would yeah, yeah. be and, and, and that, 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 that's the second yeah. part of the, uh, the question. Uh, yes, we had some other demands. Uh, the, the union has other demands. Uh, they promote uh, free education, which it was clearly a big motto, uh, a change a change of uh, in the fiscal measure, like more leftist or socialist view like uh, taxing the rich or uh, impose on, on big company, stop uh, the mining pros procession in the north, yeah, they, uh, stop the, the, uh, the, fees, the, the, Ike, the fees of Ike in the uh, electricity because it's a public service, yeah, they raised the, the fees in the electricity and there was a a plan to uh, increase, uh, to, to put some fees in the um, health uh, healthcare because healthcare is free in Canada, but they plan to impose some measure that will cost you some, some money if you go to hospital and things like that. And uh, those measures were, uh, it was a part of our discourse and a part of our demands. Uh, so with that we can we have uh, made some solidarity with other groups and they all, uh, the government uh, uh, did not apply those, uh, those new uh, fees. Uh, so we, we, we had some broader, uh, but if you want, uh, I think in the manifesto uh, had uh, a lot of what the union wanted, but it not, because the movement was not just the movement of the union. There was an activist who, who proposed an alternative, like the anarchists, uh, even the socialists and the communists, but they are not really strong in, in Montreal. Uh, anarchists are, are, I don't know, there are just more people who are anarchists, uh, especially among the young, uh, the youngster. <coughs> and so, um, when you were in some demos, you can hear that, especially uh, all the motos and the slogans were not uh, really like one. You can hear uh, 
Ah, Nancy, Nancy Capitalis. It was one of the strongest of the of the, of the demo. Or one, two, three, four. This is fucking class war. Five, six, seven, eight. Organize and smash the state. But those demands cannot be really impulse. In, it was yeah. I'm on the activists. I'm on the people in the street. But after that, it's it's difficult to to have it. Uh, Put it outside of the. Of the well, I think those shots are more than. I mean, they're not really demands. No. But they're more than like uh, expressing ideology, you know. Yeah. And amongst the amongst the people. And there, there was a, maybe one of the things that the people have started to work and that they, they really wanted it was the, the social strike, a general social strike. But it is. And people made really a, a lot of effort towards that, but as I said earlier, the, the work, uh, the, the union of workers are really, really difficult to work to, with, to work with, or just to, to, to do something. They don't want to fight, and even with uh, uh, the biggest movement, the biggest social movement, uh, they could not uh, be uh, be a part of it. And even some local uh, worker union said, "Yes, let's go. Let's do a social uh, uh, social strike against uh, the government and maybe do something really nice. Unite with like uh, unite with the students, like in, the, in uh, uh, May '68 in, in France. With, uh, there was a lot of uh, like I think it was Renault who." And a, a big, a big strike. So, but they they, they feared to, to fight. So, I don't. Know. And apart from them, I don't know. It's uh, just like that, that when you were um, like um, talking from point to point, the, there was like the same situation in Slovenia. Now, in it was like similarities on every point because we also had strikes last year and and that they were quite frequent and uh, you know <laughs> the government tried to, to pass some laws to so that the demonstrations demonstrations could couldn't be arranged and so on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's an ongoing pattern because yeah. we, we saw the same thing happening in Germany and Turkey after the massive strikes, you know, in Germany and, uh, and Russia, sorry, in Russia and Turkey. After the strikes in Russia, when the elections were held, uh, immediately after Putin won again, he actually proposed new laws against demonstrators. And the same happened in Turkey after Gezi Park, you know, the same. Mm -hmm. Now they're proposing new uh, demonstration laws against obviously harsher. Yeah. So. But those, those measures are, are put everywhere. <coughs> and I think that it's not just because uh, there is something that happened in the country, but everywhere. Uh, I think it's, it, it's a tendency in all, uh, in all uh, regime or occidental regime. Because I, I cannot tell. Yeah, because about. they're fearful and they, yeah. they, they sense that something is more is happening. Just local no, struggle, and, and, and they know that the, the system is crumbling. Yeah. That that they are losing uh, because for the past this is just not important. So, but yeah, but like a possible upgrade of your activity would be uh, going to some uh, regular political activity. For example, forming a, a, a party, going to elections, or. Um, so going from the street into the system and trying to, to get some power through the system while, while you already have the support from the street, from the, uh, from the masses. So, and, and this can be done, I mean, you cannot, you cannot protest forever because people get tired, people get lost. Uh, but I mean, if you have the support, you can do a lot through the institutions themselves. Uh, if you're smart enough or, I mean, if, yeah, if you're, if you're able to, like, to break through, to get into the... Yeah, it's not a question of being smart enough, it's a question of the history that photos, uh, for example, in Romania, 
the syndicates, they actually, after the, the revolution in 1989, they actually made, uh, well, they made a party out of all the syndicates, and they actually tried to run for parliament, and they got little support. I mean, considering they were very numerous, they had very numerous members, they got little support, and it's obviously something that we're all, always going to fail trying to reform the system. Reform, everyone tries to reform the system. And it's been an ongoing failure. Reform, 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 and then just fail, fail, fail. So obviously there's something. No, I, I think there's a distinction if you form a party um, to run for, for, for parliament and this, this is an end in itself. Uh, that is, yeah, that's reformism and it's bound to fail. Mm. But if you if you have a movement or some wider, I mean, uh, wider sport, and you just have a party just to get some leverage, to get better oh, positions, okay. that's, I think that's... Uh, yeah, that, that's actually our experience. Yeah. We, we tried to reform our student organization, we'll talk about that. But, um, we, we get a lot of information from inside because our, our movement is, you know, it's, it's the, the bigger part of it is out, outside the structure. But, yeah, like, like you said, you have the, the people that pressure the lobbyist organization from it. <coughs> yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's, um, for example, in, in, in our organization, the, the the members of the student parliament don't have autonomy, um, like how they vote, but they are subordinate to, to, to the wider organization. So, um, just as an expression, that they are not the like the the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you you don't have much choice, right? Either you you, you do a revolution which is hard or which is probably impossible in Canada, I believe. Um, I mean, at the moment, other things are. Or you can try to influence the system from inside. Now, of course, either, either thing you try to choose or even if you try to choose both at the same time, it has to, to be based on, on a strong movement from, um, from beneath, right? It has to be grassroots. Uh, all the time. So this is the question of the discourse of the left for forever. How <laughs> yeah. Not really. What, yeah. what's, what are we going to put in, you know, in, in the place of, you know, what are we, how are we going to achieve, what is the alternative, you know? Uh, obviously we're not going to come up now with a, <laughs> with a proper proposal. Yeah. But the, the worst thing would be just I wish you would, yeah, yeah. I wish you would do that. <laughs> Debates, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Revolutionary reformism is quite a whole, yeah. maybe more than one century. So, uh, well, we can talk about it. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I think uh, you have a strong history. Yeah. You can struggle, but the government is the, uh, don't care for you. What's the next uh, step for you? Um, I don't know for for the student movement and uh, all this all this movement. I think uh, people, but for sure people will have been changed like forever. And um, maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I can consider to uh, yeah. other people that I have seen in the summer. I was in Turkey and I was talking with people who uh, were in the guest part movement, and they it's changed their life. Uh, for them because they don't see uh, the world and the political system as they seen before and now people want to, to be involved and the people I have met during um, me for, uh, during my movement the, the, the movement in Quebec they, they, they feel quite the same because it, it changes their life because now they want to do uh, they want to be an activist but they, I don't think uh, they will be for all of their life, but I think uh, for the next few years they, they will get involved and it will always be there. But apart from that, in some specific term, um, I don't know what's it's up to us. Uh, I mean, 
sorry, just to complete, you have to understand proposals for social change or structural change in society. Well, there are. It depends on who's talking here. Whether you have social uh, anarchists or you have communists. I mean, there are proposals. But there is a difference between proposing and actually doing it. I mean, for, I'm going to give you just one example in Greece. Uh, there are actually amongst, after the riots, you know, there are actually zones that pulled out of state cooperation. They're all really autonomous free zones. And they're really only um, partially uh, interacting with, uh, with the state. Or other so I don't know if that's good or bad, or how, how, how well they're doing, but they obviously like it that way, for now. You know, so. There are forms, and when it comes to education, there are forms of free university. I've heard of that in Serbia, I think. Free universities. I don't know how they work specifically, but. Uh, well, we have free universities for the moment, but they're trying to introduce tuition fees. No, so, no, no, no. You're, you're thinking about free universities because they're subsidized by the government. I mean, free universities because everyone does everything voluntarily. I mean, professors come and they actually uh, hold courses because they want to educate, because they want to spread messages, not just messages, knowledge. And uh, students come because they want to learn. You know. But you know how effective that is in a society, how well it can, it can be implemented on a larger scale. Well, that's the problem. Okay. So that would be the end, I think. We have another presentation, so thanks for. Uh... Oh, and by the way, I took some stickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just this one. So I suggest we have a 10 minute break.